I back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Southern Tier Brewing Company, and they're out of Lakewood, New York, and this is their vanilla scoop. So they're calling this one an Imperial Ale, and on the side of the label it says Ale with a natural flavors, and right below that it says made with milk sugar, aka lactose, and it also says made with Perry's ice cream, which we'll talk about momentarily. It comes in at 8.6% alcohol by volume. No IBUs less in time of review. And this bottle is just over three weeks old. So we have another release from Southern Tier, uh, part of their specialty Imperial Ale series. The uh, most recent one was their French Toast, which tasted exactly like French Toast to me but it was a bit too sweet. The same can be said for their Frosted Sugar Cookie, which they first released a couple years ago and then brought it back again uh, last year. I think they do a great job with nailing the flavors, though the beer itself is a bit too sweet. I feel like the Imperial Al base just doesn't hold up to like the pastry flavors. So we'll see if that is the case with this one now. This one, they say, is made with Perry's ice cream. Now, if you're in New York State, and more specifically the West New York area, you know all about Perry's ice cream. I do think they get distro into like I think it's um, northeastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, and even a little bit into the New England region. But if you're in New York, you know about Perry's. They're delicious. Most of the small, like, uh, you know, ice cream shops sell Perry's, and it's in every single grocery store, basically. So um, it says made with Perry's ice cream. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I looked on on tap, and I saw a recent picture of somebody who was at the Central New York Beer Fest, or Brew Fest, I think it was called, maybe uh, recently. And they had, they were at the Southern Tier booth getting a pour of this, and they took a picture of like the info sheet. It did say on there specifically, this is made with Perry's uh, vanilla extract. So whatever vanilla extract they're using for their vanilla ice cream is apparently in this beer. On their website, they didn't have a lot of information. I couldn't even find like the page for this yet. Uh, but anyway, I think probably 25 IBUs, even though I said they weren't listed because I think this Imperial Ale base has 25 IBUs typically for most of the beer. So anyway, we're gonna crack it open. And like I said, the biggest, issue that I'm probably going to have with this is the sweetness. I think they're probably going to nail like vanilla ice cream and an 8.6% imperial ale, as they call it. So give it a pour here and see how this one is. They also have a best by date of March 2nd of 2024. So they give a year from the bottle on date for this beer. So I just thought I'd let you know if you do see this one like a month or two from now, it's fine to pick up according to the brewery. So yeah, that just pours out like this. It has this like orange honey color. Uh, you can see through it. It's not crystal clear, but it's pretty clear. Has about a half finger of an off-white soap suds so looking head. Hold it up to the light. Yeah, it looks nice. It looks like if you just gave someone's beer, like, oh, yeah, it's like a golden ale or maybe like a blonde ale or something, right? Imperial ale? Sure. It's getting nose. It, it legit smells like a shit ton of vanilla that you would have. Like, it smells like you're about to eat a spoonful of vanilla ice cream or you're having, like, excuse me, like a cake, like a birthday cake with vanilla frosting or like a carrot cake with the buttercream frosting. It has just like that sweet confectionery vanilla vibe. Wow. As I go back, it definitely has vanilla ice cream. Like it just smells like vanilla ice cream. But what I like about it is a lot of times with certain flavors, you get natural artificial flavors in beers and they smell fake. Because ice cream, you just picture yourself eating vanilla ice cream, you know a lot of places will use vanilla extract. Um, it doesn't smell any different than like going to eat a bowl of ice cream, vanilla specifically. Am I going to sit here and bullshit you and say there's literally anything else in this nose? No, there isn't. I'm not getting any base uh, L characteristics. It smells like vanilla ice cream or it smells just like heavy-handed vanilla, and that's it. Does that smell bad? No, because I love vanilla. It smells awesome. Am I worried this is going to be sweet? Yes. Yes, I am. So hopefully it's not. Please don't be too sweet. Cheers, everybody. Let's see what this one is all about. One more sip. One more sip. Usually I instantly start. I just talk a lot on my channel. You watch my channel, you know I talk a lot. I don't know what to say yet after that first step. We're gonna take another one and see. So this is kind of strange because this is kind of not the exact opposite of the other ones, but kind of different. Body and mouthfeel. Well, let's go body and mouthfeel first. Get, get the easy shit out of the way. Mine, this is higher side of me, lower side of pole. 
has a little bit of like a syrupy thickness to it, but it's not like overly uh, done. So body's nice for an 8.6% beer. The mouthfeel, it's crisp. It's very effervescent, has a lot of carbonation, um, but it has a smoothness to it. So it's nice. So body and mouthfeel are nice. They're nice. Solid. Good. The taste. I thought this was just going to be straight on vanilla, and it's not. It's not. It's not like straight on vanilla ice cream to me. There's a lot of vanilla here, but it has the vanilla has a complexity to it. I'm almost getting like like vanilla bean more so than actual like vanilla extract. Like I'm getting like a vanilla bean kind of feel. So right up front, it's vanilla for sure. It's omnipresent, always on the palate, but it's but it's allowing other flavors to kind of peek their head in. So up front, I get this like slight bready kind of biscuity, almost malt, almost doughy kind of malt sensation, which works well because it's giving me pastry-esque kind of ideas in my head of like when I'm when I'm taking a sip, it's like, oh, it's like a vanilla cupcake or something, right? But again, here, here's the thing I'll say. This is not as sweet as, as the French toast. And it's not as sweet as the frosted sugar cookie to my palate personally. That might be different for you. You might pick this one up. I think it's way sweeter than either of those. This doesn't have as much sweetness or perceived sweetness to my palate as those. Here's the thing though. The base beer is coming more to the forefront. And I was like, oh, you know, in, in other reviews, I wish the base beer would come. Maybe I don't want the base beer to rear its uh, okay head. Because this base beer, like, again, I'm getting that doughy kind of bready thing making me think pastry. But I'm also getting this, like, slight, like, lemon tartness, lemon astringency. Maybe it's from the hops. But that hits, like, a third of the way through the palate, maybe halfway through. So on the back of the palate, that, all that dissipates. And I'm just left with a, this is a very dry beer. And I think that's why this isn't as sweet as the others. This is a very dry. Now it could be an alcohol dryness because it's 8.6. Or it could just be a dryness from the beer itself. It has no bitterness really to speak of for me. Very mild if you want like a 5% bitterness on a 100 point scale. But this is very dry. So this is the least sweet of these Imperial Isles that I've had from them. But I also think it's the first beer that didn't do a spot on bang on job of hitting that vanilla ice cream character in what they're trying to do here. Here's the thing, do I enjoy this one? I think I like it, I think I do like it. I think I like it better than the others. I don't remember what I gave those. I think I gave like the French toast like a four. I think I gave the frosted sugar cookie maybe four, two, five. And I don't really know what this one, what I wanna give it. It's it's how much do you take into consideration a drinkability? Like for me, a lot of times I'll say, man, I wish that was more drinkable. But do I wanna sacrifice what the flavor is for drinkability? I don't know. Like that's. I think the frosted sugar cookie and the French Toast did a phenomenal job of hitting what they're going for. But those were both too sweet. I think the Frost Sugar Cookie was better than the French Toast for me personally. I think I gave it like a 4.25. And I think I gave French Toast like a 4. This is kind of somewhere in between those just because it's not, they didn't nail the flavor. But I think the drinkability is better than either of those. I don't know. I'm kind of lost in how I actually feel about this beer. One more sip and then I'll try to lock something in. 8.6%. There's definitely a booziness in the chest. Um, maybe a little stringency on the palate on that finish. I think that is a little bit of alcohol dryness. So I think this one didn't hit the nail on the head with vanilla ice cream as much as the others, although you do get you know a decent uh, dollop, so to speak, of, or a scoop. You get a single scoop as opposed to multiples of the vanilla ice cream. The alcohol is a little bit more stringent and noticeable than the other two. And I only reference the other two because I think those are the only other two I've, I've reviewed on the channel in recent memory um, as far as like Imperial Owls goes with the pastry thing and, every, and whatnot. So I think I like the Frost Sugar Cookie more than this, but I like this a little better than the French Toast. The French Toast was a, just sickly sweet to me. Like it was four or five ounces I was done. I didn't finish the bottle. The Frosted Sugar Cookie one, I finished the bottle, but it was definitely sweet. This one I'm going to finish. And this also has like a little, now as I'm tasting it too, like as I'm sitting here, it has like a vanilla, if you ever had a vanilla cream ale, like the, the soda pop, kind of has a vanilla cream ale kind of feel to it. I hope they continue to do like collaborations with Perry's, do different ice cream flavors, do different, they have like, they have different um, novelties, you know, ice cream novelty uh, products. Do some of those. I think it'd be fun. Anyway, I have not much, uh, there's not much really more to kind of dissect here. I, I, I'm kind of confused at how I feel about this one. This is one of the few beers where I like I don't have like a firm score in my head, but something just popped to mind. So I'm going to give Southern Tears uh, Vanilla Scoop their one of their most recent releases. They also brought out their Hazelnut uh, Deluxe, which is part of their Blackwater series Imperial Stout. I'm going to review that one, not part of uh, Shelfie Beer Reviews, but I'm going to review that this year. I mean uh, this month. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I'm going to give this beer right here a high four to five, well four point one out of five. That's where I think this one lands for me. Now here's the thing: every time I release 
um, Southern Tier products, and especially these pastry beers, whether it's a part of their uh, Nitro Blackwater series or this Imperial Ale, or again, like the, the recent um, Imperial Styles, the Peanut Butter Cup one, and now they have the Hazelnut Deluxe. I get a lot of varying comments. Some people thinking these are too sweet. Some people, you know, just loving them. Other people just indifferent. I want to know from you what you think about this one if you've had it. So please post in the comment section. I want to see comments. I want to see folks sharing their opinions on it. That's why I do these reviews. And I really am curious to see what people think about this one. So uh, price point availability is going to um, vary depending on where you live here in Western New York, more specifically Buffalo. I saw this at three different stores and it was anywhere between $14 to $16 a four pack. So somewhere between $13.99 and $15.99. So talking about less than four bucks a bottle, fun to try for 8.6% in my opinion. And availability, wherever you see Southern Tier, you should see this at some point i would assume maybe it's only in new york but i'm pretty sure you'll be able to get this wherever southern tier gets a pretty good distro so once again if you've had this one before please post in the comment section let me know what you think about it i appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the beer patrol um yeah i'm gonna sip on this one to see how where it goes um this one is not super cold i took it out of the fridge like 25 to 30 minutes beforehand and uh this is probably like in the 50 range i would say and I don't know if I should have drank it colder or even warmer. I think this is going to change through. I, I should. I wish I did reviews where I grabbed them right out of the fridge and then I drank them and came back and uh, you know sipped on this one for half an hour, forty five minutes, and came back and was like, oh, you know, uh, it changed a lot over the course of time as it got warmer. Blah blah blah. I just don't do that. So I tried to drink this one kind of right in the wheelhouse of like the drinking temperature of this one should be, in my opinion. Opinion, my opinion. And uh, I don't know if I fucked it up, baby. Anyway, till the next one. Cheers.